Hello everybody, uh, thanks for joining me again. Uh, today I'm going to tie a little stonefly pattern. Uh, I posted this on Instagram uh, a few weeks back. So my local rivers in the winter, there's uh, really small stoneflies that come out. Even in the snow, they'll, they'll hatch. So I wanted something uh, small-ish. This is still way bigger than the actual stonefly, but it's a size 14. Uh, quite heavy, because often in the winter I'm just targeting holes and uh, quicker moving slots. So I have a size 14, 400 BL with a 4 millimeter gold bead. Uh, the stonefly in the picture is black. Uh, today I'm going to tie just a little golden variation. So for thread, it's UTC 70 gray brown. And I'm just going to start thread base. And I'm going to go down just slightly into the curve and then run my thread back up to the top. So really the there's only two materials and a wire. Um, so I call this stretch flex or stretch floss. Uh, today we're using tan. If you're going to do a black one, use black. If you're going to do olive, use olive. Uh, you could also use like a golden. I have like an orangey, orangey golden stone color. Um, but I'm doing a little more subdued today, so I'm using 10. And what I've done, like on a 12 or a 10, this is probably perfect size, but on a 14, I still want it to, to wiggle, so I take a, take a full length and I split the end with a razor blade, and then I just pull it apart. And what I'm left with is a much, much thinner, wigglier floss. So I have maybe a two inch piece here, and oops, I'm just going to wrap it around my thread and use my thread to keep it on the top. A couple securing wraps and then I'm going to stretch it as I start winding it back. And as I get closer to the back of the fly, I want to make sure that the legs are on one on each side of the body. So I'll split them, stretch them so they're nice and thin and then just touching turns, walk them back. Down to the end, and then again, I'm gonna run my thread back. So these are super long, you can cut them now, you can cut them later. I kind of like to err on the, the longer side, a little more movement, so those are about a half inch. You can always trim after, um, but obviously it's hard to add more. So the next material we're going to tie in is UTC copper brown wire in small. You could use gold, you could use regular copper, I just... I went with the copper brown because it contrasts really nicely on the against the the gray tan. So I'm going to jam this in the bead and I'm going to catch it on the far side, so the side closest to you and I'm going to do my best to keep it on that side as I wind it back. And then for this Next material is just a regular full size piece of stretch floss. And I'm going to catch that right on the top. And I'm going to stretch it quite a bit. So this is a little bit trickier. I'm trying to control two materials at the same time as I wind back. So I'm trying to keep the stretch floss right on top and the wire on the far side. Touching turns. And then I'm just going to spiral my thread 
back up to the front of the fly. To cut the stretch floss, I want to stretch it a little bit and then cut it, and the end's going to suck right back. All right, now that we have that done, I'm going to wrap the stretch floss, floss first, and I'm going to pull it a little bit tight at the back, and I'm not going to do touching turns. You can, but I like to leave a little bit of room, and I start by stretching it, and as I wind forward, I kind of relax it a little bit, so you get a little bit bigger segmentation, so you do get a slight bit of a, a taper. Catch it at the front. And you really want to make sure this is secure. It being stretchy material, it can pull out. Alright, so now we have just the, the flexi body. And then I'm not counter ribbing. I'm actually coming up in between the segments with the copper wire and just kind of accentuates the segmentation a little bit and provides a little bit of contrast so I don't just have a solid tan jelly tube body. So when that's wound up you can helicopter it off. Alright, next we're going to tie in the legs, so I'm going to come back from the head a bit, maybe, I don't know what the scissor width, about an eighth of an inch, and again, the split stretch floss. So I'm not going to bother trying to wrap it, what I'm going to do is tuck it under my thread and bring it to this side. Just one wrap to leave it there. And then the legs for the other side, same thing. Throw a wrap in. And put them where you want them. So I have the legs tied in. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap the middle down a little bit. So now that they're secure, I'm going to put in some dubbing. So what I'm going to do with the dubbing is put some behind, in the middle, and then in front. And then using the dubbing we're going to control how much the legs flare out. And I'm using Ice Dub Golden Brown. So I want a fairly thin noodle. I'd rather put more wraps with a, a thin noodle than less wraps with a real bulky, like loose dub. Okay, so this is also a little bit tricky. You kind of need to tie with both hands, but. So I'm going to go behind, and it's not really a number of wraps, it's more, you just want to give them, give the legs a prop to stand up against, kind of like a, on an intruder, a dubbing ball. So see now the legs, they flare out to the side instead of just sticking straight back. And then now I'll go in front. And there you go. Just finish the head off with a little bit more dubbing. And we whip finish. tying portion done and then trimming the legs I like to trim them all at the same time so I'll just collect them don't stretch them cut them all at the same time 
you can go as long or as short as you like. And there you have it. The Stretch Flex Stonefly. Thanks for watching.